What is up, everybody? Welcome to the flip side, a Get Your Teach On podcast where we break down, share, and challenge flip perspectives and insights on different hot topics mm. in education. Mm. Today is a brand new episode. We are so excited to have you guys back with us. We are also excited to welcome a brand new guest to the flip side couch. Or is he taking your chair? He's going to take, no, 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 no. I, he's yeah. going to take my chair. I'm going to move over there. You're going to sit on the couch with me? Yeah. What a celebration. Yeah. Wade's going to be on the couch with me. But yeah. we are so excited to welcome our amazing friend, Hayward Jean, to the flip side podcast. Um, he is an incredible educator. We're going to let him tell you all about himself. But he, when I tell you joy just exudes, if you need some joy today, stick around because you are going to get plenty from our amazing guests. So I don't know. Can't. I may stay in this chair. I've been thinking about it. I'm still deciding listening. about oh places. My, I haven't been listening. Listening. Anyways, let's terrorists. get into the flip side. Here we go. <laughs> Wade, it is a big year for you. It is. Why? You at the end of this year, you are turning the big four zero Wade's fortieth birthday. Let, Let me see. Get a close up of the hair. Yeah, have we got grays yet? What do we got oh, going lots on? Lots of grays. Oh wow, yeah, salt yeah. and pepper. Wow. Okay, yeah, but it is Wade's fortieth birthday this year. We're gonna have to have a party on the podcast for sure for that. But. You were born in the 80s. I was not born in the 80s. So I want to do a little 80s trivia. 80s, um, baby. With, with the upcoming. But we're really 90s kids. 90s right? kids, we're but 90s 80s, baby. I mean, 80s baby. 80s baby. Oh. 80s baby. Were you born in 84? 84. So I don't know if you can say you're a 90s kid. I, you're like. I mean, it's 90s a little bit of both. teens, maybe, but. Okay, let's keep going. Come on, come on, you go. you rounded let's... down to the 80s, then up to 90s as we go. Okay, so first question here um, What does VHS stand for? VHS. You guys know what that is, video right? Video home system. Video video home wow, system. Wow, yes, you got it. Yep. Video home system. I would never got yeah. that. Okay, next one. What was the most popular video game of the 80s? Super Mario Brothers? No, 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 no. That was the name of it. Super Mario Brothers. Pac-Man. Okay, it is Super Mario Brothers. Oh, that's there one and one. One and one. You got one it. Great one, job one. there. Um, Everything's competition between us. Okay, here's another video game. What did you play video games, Wade? Yeah. What was your uh, favorite gaming system? Well, in the in, in the eighties, in the no, that wasn't around yet. In the eighties, yeah, it would have been. So you you had Atari and you had the Nintendo system, which came out. Oh, I wasn't born. It don't look at me. Definitely I don't know. Nintendo system. So you, when you go like this. <laughs> Yes, and you blow it up. I know that. I know that life actually. But that was oh, also like Super, Ni- that was Super Nintendo, Sega, those things were in the over, 90s. Yeah, okay, yeah. so these, I guess there's just a lot of um, video game ones. Here's this one. What 1981 video game well, well, was the. Oh, what was the question? question? You, you asked what my favorite was. No. You were just, you were just no, no, I was oh, just, just curious. Really curious. Oh, yeah. okay. I was just okay. like, you know, trying to get my, you know, my 40 year old friend. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, um, all right, next one. What 1981 video game was the first to tell a story during the game? The, which, oh. which year? Oh, oh, I know, I know. It has Zelda. The, uh, Ze- yes. It's not Zelda. The first to tell the story. What year? No, what year? What year? 1981. Oh, that was before I was born. Okay. Um, Pac-Man. Uh, <laughs> That's forever my answer. It's not Pac-Man. There's, I mean, there's, there's no story there. Uh, was it... Um, Space Invaders. It was not. It was Donkey Kong to tell the story. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's when he was born. All right. Next yeah. one. Yeah, oh, Hope will love this one. What fruit, what fruit candy with a balloon on the wrapper came out Flip in pop. 1985? Blue Pop. It's not Blue Pop. No. Say it again. Fruit balloon. candy with a balloon on the wrapper came out. Airhead. Oh, Airheads. Yeah. Yeah, I said Airhead. It there you go. Nice. Airheads. Airhead. Take the tape. Airheads I said it first. <laughs> okay, we'll go. Next one. What was the highest grossing film of the 80s? Highest grossing film of the 80s. Wade should like this one. Star Trek. E.T. E.T. Yeah. Boom. Got it. E.T. He loves the aliens. There we go. Next e. one. E. What sort of car is used for the time machine in Back to the Future? What is the name of that's the car? A, uh, I even knew this one. That's Thunderbird? A, no, Thunder. good lord. Uh, it's, Grease Lightning? Oh, no. <laughs> what's, what's it start with? A D? A DeLorean. Yes, there you go. Oh, wow. A DeLorean. I about to say Mandalorian because of the alien thing you said. 
Okay, what? Oh, Disney fans for this one. What animated Disney film was released Little in Mermaid. 19... That's correct. In 1989. <laughs> 1989. Let me see if I can find a good last one. Oh, it was I a love new this gener- one. It was a new era of Disney Oh, animation. this is interesting, and I do like this movie. What 1984 film did John Hughes take just two days to write? I don't know, but he just took two days to write it. What, what year? Uh, 1984. It is a cl- it's a classic. Top Gun. No. It's like a... Goonies. No. Oh, that's such a good one. It's more of a... Um, okay. Think like Breakfast Club type movies. Breakfast at Tiffany's? No. Oh. <laughs> You're clo- it's, it's in the same realm of that. Oh, you wrote no. it in just two days. I know oh, my give gosh. You a good clue, and I said, but, what about no. um, Breakfast at Tiffany's? Okay, that's I really it. think... I don't know... I don't know if it is this movie. I don't know. This is my 90s showing. But I think maybe there's the boombox at the window. I think. Oh. They hold the boombox up to the girl's window. What is that movie? 16 Candles. Oh, yeah. Does that I've happen in that movie? It. Never seen it. I've never oh. seen that movie. Jeez. <laughs> One more. Come on. One we more. got. I mean, I don't, we, we've I don't spent more time okay, on music. the other ones. This is fun. Okay, let's see. Um... Jeez, a lot of these are a little deep. I probably should have found another um, <laughs> Google one because some of these are very... Okay, what launched in 1981 that changed the way people discovered music? CD player. No. No. Pac-Man. No. No. Walkman. No. Pope King. Stop guessing. There's... It, say it one more time. What launched in 1981 launched. that changed the way people discovered music? Oh, uh, was it... Uh, what was his... Uh, uh, Casey Fox. Kasem's... No. Who? You know Casey Casey Kasem? It no. Is, oh god. Never heard of him. Hey, Never met him in my Kasem. life. Hey, this is a way that uh, this was very much alive in the nineties too. A way for people to Billboard one hundred. Uh similar vibe, but no. MTV. Yes. MTV. No. There we go. That's eighties trivia. We can we can keep I it. I knew before MTV. you put it on the screen, Chase, you I big want, old cheat. You jack wagon. What He's are you Googling doing? He, he probably has AI there. Yeah. He's like, I want to play. Yeah. Yeah. He, 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 we're playing versus AI. Our third contestant <laughs> is AI, um, as you can go. But just some fun little... Oh, here's another one. What is the name of the band who wrote the 1981 hit, Don't Stop Believing? That's easy. Journey. Don't stop. Journey. Yeah. Believing. Just a small town girl. Okay, there we go. But let's not waste any more time. Let's dive into the flip side. Time to speak live in the house. Hayward <laughs> John himself. Yes, How's sir. it going, buddy? Man, it's going great. Enjoying life and enjoying this new season. Man. Well, welcome to the flip side for our viewers and listeners at home. Let them know who you are, what you do, a little bit about Hayward. Okay, Hayward John. I am director of student services in Orangeburg County School District. I'm also founder of Speak Life Enterprises, where I get the opportunity to empower school districts and communities all throughout the country, really excited about that. Uh, my top job is I am the husband to the phenomenal star. Yeah, yeah. you are. Yeah, you you know, are. Her mom star. named her right. She sh- lights up every room. She does. Right, and so she's an educator as well. She can teach a dog how to read, so she's <laughs> extraordinary. Been married now 18 years. And we have three dynamic children who are also functioning in the same capacity <laughs> that we function in yes, on their do. levels and their capacity. So we love that we're pastors now. So we've been pastoring for about a year and a half. Yeah. I don't know how y'all right? listen. Y'all are super human. <laughs> we're gonna have to do a couples edition where I sit it out and Star oh, comes and joins hey, the couch. Let's too. do it. Yeah. Let's or I'll just it. sit in the middle like the fifth wheel. On yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. It'd be a double also, day plus Chris. Also yeah. an author. Yes, yes, author, yep. Oh, yeah. I'm author of a book called Weapons of Mass Distraction. So I'm really intentional about ensuring that our young people aren't being driven and diverted to places that's going to lead them to destruction. Right. Yeah. And then we also, my wife and I co-authored a marriage prayer journal as well yeah. called The Power Cord Marriage. So if go. you can tell, we're all about building families yeah. mm-hmm. and we believe schools is a powerful way to do so that. So not busy right. at all is what you're saying. Oh man, yeah, no. Just like, no. Yeah, looking just for like something to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. More. <laughs> more, really. For the next yeah. Thing Listen, to, to yeah. looking for something to do. Hayward, you've served in a number of roles within in schools oh, and in your district talk a little bit about kind of your background within education the roles that you've served from teacher to administrator to now your current level yeah. and kind of just your experience there man i got a full scholarship at mother university my mother taught me <laughs> about being a teacher <laughs> uh that? seriously and then after that i went to Claflin university wait pause you cannot go. just brush past that tell uh, us more about that so my mom is a single parent mom yeah uh, my father wasn't in my life at all my mother never made that an excuse for us so what my mom did was she turned our house into a school. And how many siblings did you have? I had about 22 children, uh, siblings. Yeah. All right, my father just wasn't there in our lives, but I was raised with my twin brother and a younger sister. And my mother turned our house into a school. 
And she literally made every moment a teachable moment. Wow. She was intentional about ensuring that we would grow up to make life better for other people. Mm. So we watched her do that. She modeled that. She would uh, have after school programs uh, during the school year for kids who also didn't have um, people that were structures and their structured in their home. And so I then I was empowered to be an educator and didn't know it. Wow. It was a sneak attack, bro. Yeah. It was a sneak she attack. She did the I do, we do, you, you do. do. Uh, yeah, that's man, that. listen, yeah, you about, exactly. my she mom created. was doing that <laughs> before it was heard of, exactly. man. And so from there, I was, um, I was inspired to become a teacher yeah. through the Call Me Mr. program. We got a yeah. scholarship to become an educator, a uh, program that recruits, trains, and certifies black males to be elementary school teachers and, and role models in the state of South Carolina because at the time they were less than 1%. We want to remedy that shortage. Yeah. And so from there, man, we were empowered to have an, what we call it a co-curriculum, not just your normal, it pretty much is your get your teach on <laughs> <laughs> for those That's who great. want to be teachers. Yeah. Yeah. And we went through that process SC to become, State? it was at Claflin University, Claflin. Yeah, uh, but also right it, it, it is yeah, SC State as well. It is SC State as well and multiple historically black colleges and universities um, throughout the country now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that program inspired me and lifted me into this place called education. So I've been teaching, taught for seven years. I was dean of students at an alternative school for six months, and then I was appointed to become a principal of Mellishamp Elementary that's School. Right. And that's where we all Let's started go. this little thing. And so Mellishamp, well, we always say you put the champ in Mellishamp, and there, man, I was, I was able to really be involved in a lot of communities. We, did, we made a lot of history. We were the only school in the state of South Carolina, or one of eight, excuse me, in the state of South Carolina to go from an F rating to an A rating in one yes, year. Sir. Yep. In one year, because we were intentional about building from within. We didn't hire from that, we didn't hire. We didn't do a lot of programs. We just helped to build capacity in the people that were there. And talk more about that, that kind of community there, because that leads into our topic today, which is going to be all about, it's back to school time for teachers. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. heading back. Yeah. You know, that first day back of professional development, you yeah. already know as Come a teacher, yes. it is starting with some sort of icebreaker, Say community it. thing, Say community it. building activity right. that the administrator has probably <laughs> thought about way too much for these 10 minutes. Yep. And teachers have mixed feelings in reality. Wow. Wow. about that right they're wow. walking in being like okay here we go yeah another icebreaker yep. all these things with yep. new teachers veteran teachers so before we even get into the icebreakers yeah. and back to school things like that talk about that why that was a key important for you to build within and to build up that community instead of kind of bringing in new and mixing things up why yeah. was that a key factor powerful question so we went through in our school a program detox right we just got rid of everything that was just all things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just something that you can put, say that you got it with these Title I Ooh, funds, stuff like that. Where, we just going to just get stuff. How can we make that a practice in all yeah, of them? Yeah, yeah. And so what we, our motto was, my motto at the time was build people more than buy programs, yeah. right? Because we didn't feel like buying programs was building the people. We don't think there's a replacement for a good person in front of those students. That's right. You can't That's replace right a good teacher yeah. uh, with a program. And so I wanted to program the teachers yeah. rather than the teachers build students by programs. So the way we did that was this. We made an intentional, we did We did a flip side approach. Oh. You saw that? <laughs> you saw that? Hey, I mean, if you already know the joy it brings me when the guests say flip side. Check that. I check like that. it giddy like a schoolboy. <laughs> I like perk up. I'm like, they don't, they don't try to weave it in, but I'm a, I'm a punny guy. So Let's I, go. Lo I love it. Let's go. If you Let's can do it go. two more times in this episode. Hey, oh, it's going to happen. That's my challenge. Okay, Chris, here we go. Oh, listen, okay, so, okay, so let yeah. me tell you about the flip side, right? Yeah. So <laughs> we always tell students or teachers that we want you to make your environment inviting. Yeah. We want you to build community within your school. Yeah. And so I said, well, one, we have to build community too, because we have to be models for the thing that we want students to do. Because if you're telling students to build relationships with each other and to mm -hmm. get along on the playground, well, they're watching how teachers mm -hmm. treat each other exactly. in the schools. Right. And so we have to be models of that. But not only that, so building a community is huge. Make sure our teachers had identity. We were at a failing school, so at the point, at that time, they thought that, oh, this school will never be successful. And so they pretty much identified and labeled themselves as a school that is just persistently failing. Yep. So we had to build them up. That's why Speak Life is so important. We had to speak life into them, help our teachers realize that you are important, you're valuable, you are in those students' lives for a reason. Well, here's how we made that flip side, right? So the community piece, we tell kids to come into our community all the time. But what do we do when it comes to us going into their communities? Mm -hmm. How can we tell students, come into our communities and expect them to conform to our community, but we have not stepped foot in that. Some teachers are afraid to go into some of our children's communities. Yeah. So what we did was we got on the bus and we traveled throughout our kids' communities. And we got off the buses and we visited families together with we had books popsicles or whatever yeah. and just built relationships in their communities our kids saw 
us in their spaces. And the parents, the, the caretakers. The parents, and, yeah. the community. And, and, yeah. and I, we didn't realize how much it would take off because people were talking about the school district office. We heard what y'all were doing with those. Yeah. But what it did was it made our students feel like, oh, they care about me as a person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I matter to them because they're off the bus. They're on the same bus that I ride. Yeah. And they are now in my community. And so it makes it easier for them to, for our students to come into ours because we went into theirs. I love that about bringing everyone together and that community. So that brings me into our topic for today yeah. about back to school icebreakers. Yeah. So teachers are getting there. Now, if they have you, like I said, they're going to be fired up Man, no matter let's what go. Let's in go. front of you. So you are the icebreaker. <laughs> I say, love it. I love but it. But a lot of administrators are planning for that first day back. They want to lift up their teachers. They want to speak life into their yeah, teachers. Yeah. Some may be high energy like me, like yeah. you, and they're going to have that. Some are maybe just planning to... Maybe that's not their wheelhouse, but they really want to kind of get that staff together, build that community for icebreakers. And teachers feel different ways about those <laughs> right. icebreakers. Some right. are like, I see the purpose. I'm going to do it. And yeah. some are like rolling their eyes the whole time, yeah. shuffling their fing like their feet in, mm -hmm. all the things. So first of all, how do you feel about back to school icebreakers? Yeah. How did you feel about it as a teacher? I already know the answer probably. But yeah. also, yeah. how do you feel as, as an administrator? And what do you think the purpose of that? Would be. By icebreakers, just to clarify, so yeah, yeah, on yeah. the same page. Yeah. That's like the first day back, those first Correct. three oh, hours yes. together. First days back, not even the first three hours, literally the first hour. Yeah. Of, all yeah. right, everybody go, we're going to yeah. do this activity to kind of get mm -hmm. to know each other a That's little right. more. Not like rules and procedures, things like that. More like the, the games, the little things that you're going to do like, at the beginning of a staff meeting, maybe to, you know, get to know each other a little more about that community. Got it. Yeah. Well, listen, you, you only get one time to make a first impression. Yeah. Y'all you know, heard that before already. And so when it comes to an icebreaker, y'all, ice is already being broken anyway. Yeah. Like it's already happening when you're together with somebody for first. So you want to be intentional about that. But here's where it gets weird. It gets yeah. weird when it I comes love it. to. You said weird. Here, it gets weird whenever leaders, facilitators, whoever's doing them, when they make it weird. It's about how you frame it. <laughs> yeah. You are so right. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't. It, you it can't get weird. So it can't get weird. Right, you can't though. set it because, right? And now you said it, and you stole my thunder on this because I believe that if you're leading an icebreaker, you have to be the icebreaker. Yeah. So whoever's a facilitator, you got to be the one. You're yeah. setting the tone. Right. It's your energy Correct. that's going to make that icebreaker stick, make yeah. it Correct. strong. And so it's how you set it up. You can't set it up like, all right, we're about to do an icebreaker. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can't do that. Like, you, but that is how it always, it's but almost always like Here's that. the thing. Now, it's okay if you dramatize it and set it up in a way where you make it exciting like that. But if you make it feel like it's a checkoff list, something to do, Correct. then they're like going to follow suit. It's like chipping away at ice with a plastic spoon. You ain't going to yeah. get anywhere at all. Yeah. It's not, like the agenda not. for something would say, item one. Back to school icebreaker. Yeah, item that, two. That's it. For, that's it. Let's go. It's even worse when somebody's leading the PD and it's like, all right, guys. Like you said, I don't remember. It's time for the icebreaker. Who's leading mm -hmm. the icebreaker? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, how different God. teams will do yeah. it. And Bueller, like, oh, Bueller, Bueller. I'm about that one. <laughs> no, and so and that, that's exactly it. And so it has to do it. But let's think about it. Now we're most of us from the south, right? right? You know, we got those ice bags. Uh, you know, the big <laughs> ice bags you get from the gas station, and you get them. And what do we do? We don't. We we jump on the ground. Yep. We smash them. What I'm trying to say it. I felt it. I heard it too. I knew it was coming. I was trying to get it. I heard it too. Keep going, Hayward. It's, it's, so, he's lazy. It's zoomed in on you. You're good. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So being from the South, you know, we have those cookouts. And when you get the cookouts, you have to be responsible for getting ice. We go to the gas station to get the ice and those bags. Right. I say that because when you get those bags, they're, they're heavy, they're uncomfortable, and we don't, use a block or anything no. we take those bags and, and slam we them smash them that's right it. that's we what smash we do them, right we smash them because <laughs> and so i'm saying it because that's uncomfortable all right it's heavy i'm trying to tell you that icebreaker being having an icebreaker it's uncomfortable yeah all right it's awkward anyway lean into that discomfort yeah. because that's the whole purpose of an icebreaker to right. get rid of the discomfort to get people to get along with each other because that's, that's good it's vital yeah. yeah it's so vital because when you're breaking the ice you're getting people to have the opportunity to get comfortable you can't learn you can't facilitate a pd you can't really get the content if you're frozen if you're rock solid and so Woo. yes you got to be it's, that's why it's called icebreaker come on Whoa, Whoa, I, I, <laughs> my mind's blown oh blown <laughs> but this is your chance i mean any championship team, the only way to be a championship team is for the people on the team to come together, yes. yep. to get to know right. each other. But here's the beautiful thing about an icebreaker. It breaks the ice from you feeling like you're just a professional. Mm -hmm. when, you have, when you're doing an icebreaker, you get to be 
a human. Yeah, get it, to know it honors the humanity of the person. You mm -hmm. get to spend time knowing it's a reflection point. Because, mm -hmm. you know, some of those icebreakers are really cool. One icebreaker we did uh, as a, when I was a principal is we did a scavenger hunt. Should we do it right now? <laughs> <laughs> and so we sent them all around the school and in groups. Uh, in grade levels, they were they mixed, and they would go around the school, find these clues, and they had to do a selfie. Right. And they had to post the selfie. So that was one way to tell about what's happening in our school, but it was also an opportunity for them to get along, yeah. run around the school, yeah. have fun. We did one like similar around our whole community. So it was things in the local town, so, businesses, partners, our business partners. We'd have to go find these different things. Yeah. It was probably yeah. the most fun ever yeah. had yeah. that we did that. I yeah. just love how you talk about icebreakers, which is why we were so excited to have you on for this episode, <laughs> because this could have gone in many different directions. But... I think that, you know, a lot of times the intentionality is not there, which is why you don't have the outcomes that you want to have. So again, I think we have to be so cautious. And this is so true also, because right now we're talking about from an administrative perspective and teachers, whether or not they mm -hmm. like, like icebreakers yeah. and, and this directly carries over to your classroom Correct. when you are then the one responsible for breaking the ice wow. with your students. Yeah. And so while this might sound like um, from a teacher's perspective, yeah, we don't hey. want those icebreakers or whatever sure. it may be, right. eventually that ball is passed to you and now you're the leader, wow. you're the one responsible. Wow. Wow. And so I just love how you brought the conversation to just the intention of what the purpose of it is. Yeah. So many times in education, we're doing things just to go through the motions <laughs> versus having what is the purpose of my right. outcome right. and the way that you explain yeah. that and what the purpose of it and what the use of it should be. Yeah. That makes me excited to that's actually so like do an icebreaker. Yeah, that's so good. Oh, Whereas before up. I was like, that's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really up. That's excited right. about yeah. icebreakers. There we go. There <laughs> now, on the opposite, yeah. what would you say to teachers that they're like, okay, great. For Hayward, he's got the energy. I yeah. wish I was there, but mm -hmm. my icebreaker's at my school. I walk in, we sit down. We got to do that two truths and a lie. Tell me your favorite <laughs> part of the summer. Whatever yeah. it might be, because their administrators are planning this day they don't right. really have control over it mm -hmm. what advice would you have for them they're walking in first day of school this is now going to set the tone essentially yeah. Yeah. what if they are feeling i could be doing a million other things in my classroom right now yeah, i could be setting up i could be doing this too. i could be doing that and yet i'm sitting here talking about Susie's family vacation with her so the teacher <laughs> mindset the teacher Ooh. mindset during the ice correct what would you say to those teachers that maybe are like i could be setting up my classroom open house is coming up i don't yeah. have time for this nonsense we're going to stick well, again you sound something like this very frozen yeah. right <laughs> you need your ice broken right <laughs> that, that, that's somebody who needs their ice broken check inside. yourself <laughs> yeah. and so but here's the so when i think about it again I'm not so trying it's a big problem is what it, you're saying it, it, yes and so it, it is because <laughs> the culture and climate is not just set by the principal now of course yes. we facilitate all the leaders they facilitate that but it's really carried by those who are working yeah. with those students. Oh, yeah. It, it's, it's carried by them. So you have the opportunity to actually be a leader without the title. And y'all know the best leaders are the leaders who don't have titles, yeah. Yeah. are the people yeah. who lead by example. Say that again. And so you are a model. So you're, you're influential when you're, when you're like that. So here's what I would encourage teachers in that because I believe that that teacher wants to pour into their students. I believe that teacher wants to be someone that grows students, yeah. right? Tell me any water that can be, that can water a plant as ice. Right, it's got to melt. It has to melt. And so I would say for you, in order for you to be somebody, because you're not just pouring in content to that student, mm -hmm. you're pouring in yourself. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so if you're having that mindset, understand that the person you are is a student you're going to teach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the person you, you are in front of that, whether you like it or not, yes. the person you uh -huh. are in yeah. front of that principal, that leader, is a student you're going to have. And so I would say for that person, be the student you want to teach. Exactly. Wow. I mean, and the same is true. I mean, the whole time you were talking just about leading those icebreakers or whatever it may be, whatever you want to call it, that's an opportunity for that principal or that facility, whoever it is, for that school to model mm -hmm. the example of what they would expect for you as a teacher in front that's of right. your students and it's vice versa, same thing. If I'm a teacher driving to school, first day of school, and I know that, okay, we've got this meeting today, yeah. I'm anticipating, okay, this is the type of student I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be yeah. respectful, pay attention and I'm going to try to buy all in because that's what I want my students to do too. So I think yeah. it's full circle. And sometimes it, it circle. does take a little like faking it to get there because, oh listen, yeah, of course, we're all adults. So like, yeah, so we good. get it, but it takes yeah. that. I'm going to put a little extra effort Super in good. and not with that mentality and that kind of dragging your feet yeah. and things like that. Especially and, knowing that someone else put effort in correct. to do this, you know, right. like I'm going to be and you know, it's, you know it's coming. It, yeah. Is, yeah. Coming. <laughs> it is coming. It right. is coming. So how are right. you going to show up yeah, to be the best example for what you want to see for that for that school year? Yeah, it's your yeah. What do you hope? We'll, we'll start with an administrator perspective because then, again, we're hoping to see this from our teachers, which then they carry back to their classroom, which we want to see from students. 
what is your hope for your outcome? Because I think that's part of the intentionality is if yes. we know what outcome we want to occur, what outcomes do you want to see? Because I know you wouldn't do anything unless, yeah. it, unless it gives an outcome. Yeah. So what yeah. outcomes do you hope to see when you are setting up establishing these icebreakers for your staff? And this was my question too. Top three. Top yeah. three outcomes that you want yeah. from this uh, this icebreaker, getting this to activity. activity, whatever yeah. it is. That's just yeah. the name we're calling yeah. it. Yeah. And then you, you said it. So there's this thing called collective efficacy where we want all who work with students to believe in all our students. Yes. One time I asked a question at a, in, in a, in a t training that I did. I asked, um, I said, raise your hand if you believe, if all of you believe in our students. And they all raised their hand. I said, raise your hand if you believe that everyone you work with believe in all our students. They didn't raise their hands, did they? Nobody raised their hand. No. Not one person. Oh. I said, that shows us, one, we got some ice, we got a break. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But two, it shows us that there's a collective efficacy issue where it's one thing for me to believe. But when I know that I'm passing my child over to you, I know you believe. Mm, wow. That's the power that's of, and I'm not, again, I'm not trying to be icebreaker so deep, but that's the power yeah. of anything oh, you do with teachers yeah. is that you're leading towards us getting collective efficacy that yeah. we all believe. And that I'm confident that you believe in my students. My students are like my children. Yeah. And if I'm going to turn my child over to you, yeah. I got to believe that you believe. That's right. In my student, the in most my child, schools that I've been a part of, yes, oh my gosh. I can say, yep, it's yeah. huge down there. Yep. So what uh, you're doing is an icebreaker. You're you're leading towards setting up the vision. What do we all see, and do we all see and believe the same thing? All right, collective efficacy number one. What's number two takeaway from icebreakers getting to know you mm -hmm. activity? Let's hear it. And the second thing is, I'm seeing my colleagues as people, not just professionals. Mm. So that's right. huge. This is so important. Yes. <laughs> Listen, Go ahead. You, you no, know, no, I want. That, you that's to your sermon. That. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> you're always on that. But it, it's that's, that's important because I believe that your professional life is birthed from your mm -hmm. personal life. I believe you're no, you're not a, yep. again, and I get it. You can be two people and, and do that for such a, but, but it won't last for so long. I believe that who you are, especially in this calling called perfect, call mm -hmm. education. This educational calling is what is deeper than a, a job. Y'all yes. mm -hmm. say it all the time. You're more than an educator. Mm -hmm. So if I'm more than an educator, I got to honor your humanity. And so if I'm working with you, I got to know you yes. in order to work with you. If I got to know my students in order to teach them better, I got to know my colleagues in order to teach with you better. Yes. And, so, and I think a lot of times, huge. especially in education, we are so isolated to the first grade team, second grade team, <laughs> kindergarten <laughs> team. We did something at our school that yeah. every staff meeting, we can no longer sit by teams. We like, mm -hmm. that's not Good. happening. You need to mix up because Love if it. we're only associating with these Love five, it. six people, seven people that are on Love our it. team, we are never going to build that yeah. community unless yeah. we're outside. And it's tr teachers are so clicky Come with on. either their friends or you know things it. that are happening there you know and it. what that looks like. So really ensuring that it is the whole staff there. And I love what you said, personally, yeah. professionally, yeah. that's, that's what we spend most of the time talking about. What are we going to teach? How are we going to teach it? What are the standards? What are we going to do here? When do we get to have that kind of connection yeah. for seeing people as people yeah. and kind of knowing who they are really? Cause I can be honest yeah. when I taught first grade, I know very little about those fifth grade teachers, especially as a new teacher yeah. in the building. Yeah. I knew nothing about them until we did something right. outside of school and That's extracurricular, it. had a sibling, whatever yeah. that connected us there. So finding those connections is huge. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, and I mean, I will say icebreakers aren't just for the beginning of the year. And I know you Correct. said, I, yes. hate, I, don't, I hate to go so deep with icebreakers. Yeah. No, that's just called having purpose. Yeah. Like that is just called having purpose for something. And if you don't have a purpose for something, why are we doing it? But even so you know, looking at the person, I'm like one of the things that one of the schools that we worked at did was they had a bulletin board where the staff had celebrations that they could write a celebration, but it could be nothing academic, education, <laughs> wow. classroom related. It had to be about their personal life. So somebody might say, I ran a three mile race. Somebody might say, I finished six books this month. Somebody mm -hmm. might say, um, I had a celebratory night with my family. I literally could be anything. But then the cool part about that is as a staff member, I can go re read those and I can say, oh my gosh, Chris finished a three mile race. I know wow. how big that, wow. I'm gonna go to him. <laughs> that would be a big deal, <laughs> that would be a big deal. <laughs> but I'm gonna go to him and as now a faculty member, I can say, Chris, oh my gosh, I saw that you finished a three yeah. mile race. That is so incredible. I'm so Thank proud. Thank you so much. Right, that builds those. <laughs> I'm done with I this. want it to happen now. That for, builds for you. those Let's connect. go. One of these days. Go. It's going to be the Disney races. We're going to get them in there. Um, I but ain't running that. I'm taking my time getting my selfies with Mickey and Minnie if I'm doing a <laughs> Disney race. But back to your point. That's an icebreaker for conversations yeah. that's good. that need to be had because so yeah. many times, I will never forget this, honestly, as long as I live. This was maybe my second or third year of te teaching. But we had um, 
a teacher retire. Her name was Miss Guffey. And she mm. was an incredible teacher in the building. Everybody yep. adored her, looked up to her. Like she Second was like teacher. icon. Wow. <laughs> she was like icon <laughs> in the building. And so Legend. I'll never forget when she stood up and everybody was kind of like celebrating, you know, just her retirement. And she was thanking some of the people um, at the school for different things. She never looked at one person and said, thank you for teaching me how to teach this lesson or how to do this standard or how to, she looked at, this is how much I remember it. She looked at another third grade teacher, Jamie Few, and she said, thank you for being who you are because she said you meant more to me in this building than mm. you would ever know because she said every time you would come to me it was not anything about my classroom or what i need to do you would simply ask me about my family yep and i'm like the power that that has and what she took from her career as a teacher the things that she remembered most were not the people who gave her the copies or the lesson plans yeah. or the, it was the people who made her feel community something. family and who cared about her as a person. Uh, and that's and so was, yeah. I think that's such a simple thing that you can mm. practice is have that celebration yeah. board somewhere and then be intentional about that's it so as good. teachers yeah. to yeah, go and yeah. celebrate because that also brings the question or brings the concept to the forefront that teachers are more than teachers and that we need to celebrate them as people too. The more we celebrate them as people, the better teachers. It breaks down have, barriers you know? to like for the professional side. Yeah. Like it, it yeah. opens up a whole new realm of possibilities yeah. for um, helping people, but then also receiving help and humility and all these other things that we yeah. talk about are difficult. Absolutely. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. We got number one and two. Yeah. Number three, takeaway for Wait, yeah. you. Just segue, literally segue into it because it adds life to the work. And so that, that's the third one oh. is because it's important to enjoy your job. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Simon Sinek talks about this how a boss could be such a terrible boss that a person will love their job so much and hate their boss that they're willing to endure the job just because they love the job so much. Or somebody loves their boss so much, they hate their job, but they're willing to endure the job because they love their boss. When can we get to a place where we love the job and we love our bosses? Mm. We love the job and we love people that we work with. Why is that important? Because for me, the reason why I was intentional about the leader that I was is because, and the leader that I am is because I realized when I lead you, you were going home to your family. I don't want you going home, sitting at the dinner table with you and, and Mav, and y'all are, and you're, you can barely talk, you're frustrated because of the boss you had. Did. You're successful, yeah. you're getting a job done because you're hitting the marks because I made it so intimidating that you're gonna get the job done because you don't wanna displease me, but you're not happy at home. Oh my gosh, I was intentional yeah. about making sure that the people that I worked with could also go home and still have a life at home nice. because they didn't have to worry about the supervisor at school. Oh. How about that at the workplace? Everybody how many wants people, to know if you're hiring and where they can hire. Yeah, man, let's go. <laughs> but think about it, though. Think about how many people hate the people they work with, but they need that job, yeah. and they go home miserable. Yeah. I don't want people to retire to die. Mm. I want people to retire to live. Yeah, man. The way you do that is by building a community in such a way that we love each other. Mm -hmm. right. It's not about just loving students, it's about loving the people that we work with. So that's why those icebreakers are huge because it gives you the opportunity to build those relationships so that you can have quality relationships at work because we're spending more time with our colleagues than we are with our families. Oh man, you make me want to be a better mm -hmm. person every day. <laughs> Come on, Ted Lasso. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, think, I think a lot of the listeners can relate to kind of just that mindset shift of yeah. when you walk into the icebreaker, yes, you have a million other things of that course. you need to do. Everyone right. does. Oh, man. Yes, Everyone does. it is awkward. And I think yeah. naming that was super key That's for good. me to be like, yeah. Yeah, it is weird because mm -hmm. we are grown adults. Yeah. I worked with you last June yeah, yeah. and now we're back here. It's been three months, Karen. Like, I know. Like, I, know. I don't really care that much about what. And I got a million other things to do. Like, that's, that's the reality it. of it. That's I got it. things to do and I'm trying to get to my classroom as fast as possible to set it up. Right. But I think going into the mindset of this is going to kind of chip away at those things to make the bigger impact mm -hmm. is, is huge. So you've changed my mindset. You put me on the flip side. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, Let's there we go. go. <laughs> there we go. Love it. But any last words for this episode? This is not the last time you'll be yeah. on the um, yeah. podcast for sure. Um, but any last words as these teachers are in the back to school season, some have already been back, some are about to go back and what that looks like as they head back to school. And I really want to encourage them and speak life to them and let them know that there, there's no coincidence. There's no mm -hmm. accident that they're with the college that they're with and they have the students that they have. I know yep. sometimes it seems like that principals played a practical joke on you by putting certain <laughs> kids in your class, but yeah, they're trying to get rid of me this time. Nope, there's a reason why those individuals are in your classroom right. and the reason why you're on that hallway and you're in that school. Yep. And so you lean into experiences that's gonna cause you to know more about the people you work with, mm -hmm. lean into the opportunities to grow so that you can be not just a better per professional, but a better person. Amen. You are necessary. 
I want you to know that all you have is all you need. That's yeah. it. And so because of that, I don't want you to negate all that you have. I want you to lean into growing mm -hmm. and making yourself a better educator so that you can make better students. Well, wow. my cup is just overflowing Woo! over here. I mean, we just got a word. I, I, I could listen, I, as always. I we could just got a word on an episode about icebreakers. We knew. <laughs> right. We knew. It's Hayward. We knew. Let's we go. knew what would Let's happen. Go. We knew what would Let's happen. Go. But seriously, yes, we, we love did. you. The we conversations did. I love that we have. Truly. This will be the first of many, many conversations. Yes, Enjoy it. You're going to be invited right there in that same seat. Hey, I love so it. Let's get do your it. booty comfy Let's right there. Let's do it. Let's do it. Because truly, what you do for education and teachers and leaders is so impactful. So means a lot. We love you. If you are listening or watching, make sure you tune in every Monday for a brand new episode you can watch it live and see Hayward here in the studio on YouTube or you can listen on your favorite streaming platform we That's hope right. you have the best week but until then we'll catch you on the, the flip, flip side. side bye guys